Show how I'm gonna take this style of mailbox apart and prep it for paint. Start off by taking off anything you don't want to get paint on. Just gonna take this handle off. It's just a Phillips with two screws. They're all different. Some of them don't even have this type of handle. They just have the little single handle. So we're gonna just take this apart real quick. Set this off to the side. You also, all these flags are pretty similar. You have a little tab thing in here. You just pull this tab out like that. And then this flag assembly just comes right out. That's how it works. So, now that the mailbox is ready, there's nothing else on there that we don't want to have paint on. We're ready to start prepping. We're just going to sand this whole thing down with 320 on a DA. Okay, I feel like I've got about as far as I can get with the DA. The rest of it we're going to do with the Scotch-Brite. Um, I'll show you what I, I got gray and you got red. I'm probably going to use a red Scotch-Brite since we're using primary. We want to give it a little bit more toothing, something for it to bite. Um, that way the paint don't lift. This here is the red Scotch-Brite. I got this at our automotive paint supply store that we had locally in Wichita. Um, what I'll do is I'll just cut this in half because I don't need a full sheet for mailboxes especially and uh, we'll just cut this in half and this here we'll better get into all these grooves with this it's a lot easier it's it's real you know easy to maneuver and get around in some of these tighter areas Right here I'm using a sanding block to try to get rid of some of the ripples up here on the top of the box that I noticed. Now that we have the entire surface sanded, it's time to prep it by using a wax and grease remover. I put it in a smaller bottle, so we're just going to use a clean towel. You're supposed to use a lint-free towel. This isn't probably a lint-free towel, it's just what I have. and. Uh, we're just going to wipe down the entire surface and just clean it the best we can. We don't want any of these uh, dust or any grime or grease that may have came off from our fingertips from sanding. We want to get rid of all that so the paint will stick. When it starts getting real dirty like this, I'll flip it. on wiping it down you get done with this part it's a good idea to use a tack cloth it's just a sticky cloth you get at an automotive store as well I think like O'Reilly's and AutoZone any, any place like that that sells paint too will have it and that just lifts any of the fibers or something that you may have left behind from your towel. You want to do that right before you shoot your uh, primer on here. Okay. I'm going to use a clean one. 
going to go over it. We want one side with just a little bit, and then I'm going to dry it off right behind it. This is just a once over, real quick. All right, in our bare metal spot, there's a couple places where I burned through with my sandpaper. I'm gonna be using a self etching primer. This is what you wanna use. And this is just, because it's a mailbox, we get away with just in a little rattle can. That step's done. We let it dry for about however long the label says. It's gonna be probably an hour or so. And I'll come in here and lightly scuff with that Scotch-Brite, and then I'll be ready to mix up my primer filler. Okay, this is the primer we're gonna be using. Most primers are four to one. This primer is four to one. It says on the mixing ratio there. So we're gonna mix four parts primer to one part hardener. We'll get our mixing cup. We find the four to one ratio. And we'll go up to two on the four. And then we'll also go to the two part on the on the one. So four parts to one part hardener. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll open up our can with the can opener. I already shook this primer up. It's a gray primer. Now I'm going to be using my mixing cup and I'm going to go to the two on the four. That'll be more than enough primer. Okay. I'm going to get my hardener. Of, these are brand new, so I don't know. It'll probably be a little seal. Now we'll go up to the two on the four to one ratio. We're doing the next part. Now I'll get a stirring stick and we'll stir it up. I just use popsicle sticks a lot of times when it's just small amounts like this. Cheaper. So we'll just stir this up. I'd rather have it a little thicker. And if you use a priming gun, it has a little thicker needle in it. You go to any store when you buy your paint gun, they can hook you up with the right kind of priming gun. Okay, now I'll show you what we do next. Put your strainer, you need a little strainer. We'll strain the primer. Being a new primer, we probably won't have any issues. Sometimes you'll have it where there'll be like some stuff in there that you kind of want to filter out over age. Sometimes it gets kind of clumpy. You stir it real good, that helps. You really want it mixed well. Okay. Now this stuff does have a shelf life, which means it will start setting up. So you read your label on that, but you want to start using it that evening when you mix it up you put it in here you got to be ready to, to prime your project you don't want it you can't wait till the next day it'll be set up okay we're gonna regulate down our air to 40 when we spray I've got it at about 80 at the gun up to here okay so you got an 80 to here and then I regulate this down to 40 so the gun has 40 psi that's what I my primer with. You can play around with your gun and mess around with it, but that's just what works well for me. You also want to make sure that you use a respirator. This stuff is toxic. It's not good for your lungs. So we will be wearing a respirator to shoot this primer. It's always good to have good ventilation. 
I have this attic fan where it draws the air out of my shop to help out with the fumes. Put a nice light mist coat over the whole area. And what this allows is when it's dry, we'll come in here and we'll block this whole thing out real quick with the wet sand and block. And it'll show us where we've missed. Anywhere there's still this guide coat, this darker color, you gotta keep sanding. That's how you know how much you sand it, you wanna make sure you get through it, you know. Get it all off of there, then you know you've hit the whole area. So that's what a guide coat looks like. Okay, for the wet sanding, we're gonna be using 600 wet dry sandpaper, and then you fold it up and you don't want to you, you don't want to sand with your fingertips you want to sand with the palm of your hand I run a garden hose and just lightly wetten it wetten your block make sure it's clean of any dirt and debris otherwise you'll scratch your paint this is going to be a real fine sanding You can wet sand 400 if you'd like. It'd be a little quicker. I'll bring you in so you can see what, what I'm doing here and what it needs to look like. It's a lot easier to see it up close. You see that's the guide coat and then when you sand it becomes smooth and you want to stop as soon as you get to that point as soon as you got all that sanded out and it's a real fine sand so I'm just gonna do this whole area I'm gonna do that off camera because there's really no point in showing you what sanding looks like just remember to use the palm of your hand not your fingertips and do a crisscross pattern because you're trying not to cut grooves into it. You don't want your fingertips to make grooves in the paint. So if you use the palm of your hand, it does a smoother sanding. Or you can get an automotive wet sanding block from your automotive store where you get your paint supplies. Once you're done wet sanding, try to stay away from your edges with wet sanding. Also stay away from anything that's raised and lifted like these letters and also the rivets. You'll use a gray scotch bright once it's dry and you hit these areas so you don't burn through. If you burn through, it's not the end of the world. It'll just take a little longer. You'll have to hit it with some more of that. I just use a spray paint um, primer. Wait for that to dry and then scuff it with this. But what I like to do is try to prevent myself from having to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go over it real quickly with the gray scotch bright and try to knock off some of the guide coat that's left over on there that way you know you've got it and it, it gives it um, the base coat some toothing so that way it'll stick so it's not a bad idea to hit over all of this with some gray scotch bright because this is the right um, grit basically of how you want to have it so it'll actually stick so I'm just gonna go over and hit all these hard to reach areas Once you have this box all sanded down to where your guide coat's sanded off for the most part, you might have a little bit, but as long as it's been hit to where it's got some toothing, then it'll allow that base coat to stick on there. So the next step is gonna be, I'm gonna use a wax and grease remover over this whole mailbox, 
and then it's tack cloth and ready for base coat, whatever color you want to paint it. So um, if you want to see how that part's done, I'm going to do a custom paint job on this. I'm going to try to come up with something pretty cool, maybe a Harley Davidson mailbox or something. I don't know yet. I'll, uh, I'll have a part two to this to where I paint the base coat and I do some airbrush artwork on here and then we'll clear coat it. So uh, if you want to see part two, if it's finished, it'll be on the end screen. If it's not finished, it'll be coming out in the next week or two. So just hang around and uh, can't wait for you guys to see it. Thank <laughs> you.